Good afternoon on this Friday, August 3rd, 2012. This is a 28storms.com update on Tropical Storm Ernesto, along with two newly classified tropical disturbances on the latest Hurricane Center outlook, and one of those is located fairly close to Florida. Out of consistency, we will begin once again with Tropical Storm Ernesto. The latest forecast track from the Hurricane Center is continuing to take Ernesto west to west-northwest over the next three to five days, and they are slowly backing off on the idea that Ernesto will become a hurricane before reaching Jamaica. It looks as though they're beginning to hold off on that forecast and they're delaying the classification to hurricane status until it makes it farther out into the West Caribbean. By day 5, or 8 a.m. on Wednesday, they're placing the storm as a hurricane of Category 1 intensity very close to Cancun and Cozumel, Mexico, although there are some interesting developments this afternoon. Beginning with the latest spaghetti model suite, you can see that the tropical models are still clustered more so toward the Yucatan Peninsula. There are still a few that take it into the southeast Gulf of Mexico, but the trend more westerly into Central America is continuing. Also, the latest visible satellite animation confirms that Ernesto remains widely disorganized. We've got the main low-level surface circulation trying to outrun all of its convection, which is now displaced to the east of the center, and it's still directly impacting much of the Lesser Antilles. And as we look at the latest water vapor, conditions out ahead of the system over the next 24 to 48 hours do not look any better. We still have more in the way of shear and dry air. With a weaker tropical system now expected, Ernesto is going to remain in the low-level easterly flow for a prolonged period. Therefore, this is increasing the chances of the storm running into Central America. The European model, which has been one of the best models over recent years, has been consistently showing next to nothing from Ernesto while it moves over the Caribbean, and you can see the latest 12Z run is not showing much in the way of any development due to the unfavorable conditions. Therefore, it's keeping the system on a more westerly track, and as we go into days 4 and 5, the system is forecast to run into Honduras, Belize, and the southern half of the Yucatan, but we're still going to keep an eye on it, because if this track were to even happen, it could still move into the Bay of Campeche, although all of this land interaction is going to put a very significant damper on any development prospects. In addition, the GFS model continues to trend in the direction of the European model by keeping the system weaker in the Caribbean, therefore promoting a more westerly track, and it still starts to develop the system a little bit more as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula, but overall, it's showing less and less strengthening as the system is going to run into the Yucatan Peninsula quicker than previous runs of the GFS was indicating. And even the CMC model, which has been the northernmost model all this time, is now quickly shifting its track more toward the west. And by day six, it clearly shows the storm moving over the central part of the Yucatan, but possibly emerging into the Bay of Campeche or southwest Gulf. And that is still something that we will have to closely follow. So once the next one to two Hurricane Center forecast packages are issued, there are a couple of things that I am anticipating. Number one, the intensity forecast for the Central Caribbean will be lowered a little bit due to the somewhat ragged appearance of Tropical Storm Ernesto on the latest satellite imagery. And also the models that are now backing off on the idea of this system becoming a hurricane before moving into Central America. So overall, this is good news. But interest here across the Yucatan, all the way into Belize and Honduras, still need to be very closely monitoring the system. And although the chances of a United States impact have decreased over the past six hours, all interests across the Gulf of Mexico are still advised to at least keep up with the system over the next few days. Of more immediate interest for people living in the southeast is this tropical low located over the Bahamas. It's being given a 20% chance of development into a tropical depression over the next 48 hours. And the latest visible satellite animation shows that this area of low pressure could be at least attempting to organize as we've got some subtle hints of low-level cyclonic spin here over the southern Bahamas and convection is trying to blossom over this area as you can see here. And as we turn to the latest water vapor imagery, you can tell that this is a less than stellar environment as we do have a very large upper level low over the Straits of Florida and this is helping to provide the Bahamas with 20 to 25 knots of vertical wind shear. But we have seen the occasional tropical depression or tropical storm form in environments like this. 
Just for example, Ernesto was able to become a tropical storm despite the very strong westerly vertical wind shear that was streaming across the Lesser Antilles. So interest along the east coast of Florida, you will be impacted by enhanced shower activity. In fact, this is already ongoing this afternoon. And this is going to be a feature that we will have to monitor over the next 36 hours as the guidance does suggest a northwest motion over that period. Just for example, this is the latest 12Z run of the North American model. And although the NAM is not the best of tropical models, it at least shows us what the maximum potential of this system could be. And you can see over the next 24 to 36 hours, it does show added organization over the Bahamas. And then it's continuing more of a northwest track in the general direction of Cape Canaveral. And as we move on into early Sunday morning, it's beginning to cross the coastline and then move on into northern Florida. And finally, we're also keeping close tabs on this tropical wave located to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. The National Hurricane Center is giving this feature a 50% chance of development now within the next two days. But the good news is that if this system were to even impact the Caribbean, it is still at least a week away from doing so. And it has a very tough environment out ahead of it, much like Tropical Storm Ernesto did. But we're going to keep an eye on this system, much like Ernesto and also the tropical system near the Florida Peninsula. So although conditions are looking better for a lack of development across the Caribbean, interest across the Yucatan Peninsula and the remainder of Central America are still advised to keep tabs on Ernesto and still prepare for the maximum type of storm. And based on the latest indications, that would be more so toward a Category 1 intensity. And as of right now, the consensus is for nothing more than perhaps, say, just a tropical storm moving westward into land without giving itself much in the way of any time to take advantage of more favorable conditions out ahead of the system in the Northwest Caribbean. So we're looking good out there and the US Gulf Coast so far there are no immediate threats. If anything you might want to start paying more attention to the system over the Bahamas although the maximum intensity of that system would also be nothing more than a tropical storm mainly because of the southwest vertical wind shear along with the limited amount of time over water before the system moves into Florida over the next one to two days. So thanks again for tuning in to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app. We will have more video updates and discussions as the conditions and the models change.